Welcome. This is the Global Climate Report for June 2011. In this report I tried to summarize global climate trends and major weather events that have happened in the month of June. I have made one of these for the month of May and you may want to go back to that one. The link to it is in the description box below. And to compare what has been happening during the month of June with what happened during the month of May and see if you can see any major trends. First let's take a look at global temperatures. Here I'll be using the climate record from NOAA, but you'll get very much the same result no matter which record you use. I'm showing three plots here. The lower plot shows the land temperature for every June for the last 130 years. The middle plot shows the ocean temperature for that same period. And then the top plot combines the two into a single global temperature. You can see there's an obvious trend in the data. But how did 2011 fare in the temperature sweepstakes? For land, it was the fourth warmest. The ocean temperature was much cooler, but even so it was the tenth warmest. And so these two globally averaged to come out to be the seventh warmest. How does that compare with May? When you compare the land ranking for June compared with that of May, you'll see it's much higher. The oceans are about the same. Then globally, June 2011 is the seventh highest ranked whereas May was the 10th highest ranked. So comparatively speaking, all three categories have warmed with respect to their norm. Next, let's take a look at the maps and see what has changed. Here's the map you saw in May of the global temperature anomalies. You can see the eastern half of the US, South America, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and the northern parts of Siberia and Alaska were also suffering major warming. Only two areas showed significant cooling, and that was the western half of the United States and Australia. So now let's compare that with the June 2011 map. In the United States, the heat has spread further westward. The heating in South America seems to have intensified, whereas in Europe it's about the same as it was before. The heat in Siberia seems to have modified slightly, but now China seems to have warmed up significantly, and the cooling in Australia seems to have moderated slightly. As we discussed last month, one of the best measures of whether the climate is warming or cooling is look at the number of high and low temperature records set. Again, I'll take the United States as the example because the data is readily available to me. But in June, there were 4,109 high temperature records set compared with 477 low temperature records set. That means there were nearly nine times more high temperature records set than low temperature records set, which means one can state with a great deal of confidence that there's a warming trend. If you measure the statistical significance of that trend, it's 46 sigma. In science, 2 or 3 sigma is usually required for proof. Year to date, there have been 13,784 high temperature records set, but only 5,589 low temperature records set. I think, it's, <clears throat> I think it's becoming pretty obvious this year that we have a warming trend. Another indicator of climate trends is the amount of sea ice. In the Northern Hemisphere, we've had the second lowest amount of sea ice uh, for June on record, and even the Southern Hemisphere now is showing a negative trend, albeit less than 1% below the average. Finally, let's take a look at the weather extremes for the month of June around the world. In Texas and much of the Southwest, we've had fairly severe drought conditions. Meanwhile, in the Midwest, we've had torrential rains, creating widespread flooding across the area. Tropical Storm Arlene brought much needed rain to central Mexico, but left 11 people dead in its wake. And we had tornadoes observed in Colorado. In a very similar manner to the United States, China is suffering drought from in some areas, while major flooding is occurring in others. A late season frost in western Canada has threatened many of the staple crops that they grow there. At the same time, torrential rains continue in southern Africa but the Northern Territories of Australia have suffered some of the coolest temperatures on record. However, relief is on the way to our Aussie friends. If you look closely at this temperature map again, you'll see that in the Eastern Pacific, there is a warm tongue of water stretching from the South American coast out into the middle of the Pacific. This seems to be the start of the next El Nino cycle. So Australia should be starting to see much warmer temperatures. This also means that ocean temperatures will start to increase. So one could expect higher global temperatures for the next few months. Let's see how good a climate forecaster you are. See if you can predict what the ranking for the land, ocean and global temperatures will be for July. 
Put them in the uh, description box below and in a month's time we'll see who's right. You could use any number between 1 and 130 for the ranking. So good luck with that. That's it for this month. Keep safe. Bye for now.